Hey everybody, Daniel and Brad from uh, the Go For Green Living and Full Spectrum Survival Channels. Uh, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about goats and how important they are. Uh, Daniel has two beautiful goats, which you'll have already seen coming up the trail with us. Can you tell us about them? Sure, they, they are blue-eyed uh, Nigerian goats. They're dwarf Nigerian goats, uh, and we are part of uh, their herd, as you can see. They, they stick right with us. They, uh, they want to be part of the family. And uh, of course, everybody knows we only live on one acre, so it is not enough for me to have enough to graze them. So we just take them on periodic walks, you know, through the woods, and, and you can see they, they just love the, to do this. So why would you say a goat is better than like a, um, in some regards, better than a sheep? They're a little hardier, aren't they? Yeah, they're a lot hardier than a sheep. And when a, uh, a sheep, if a dog was to run them, then, uh, you know, they, they have heart attacks and die. They just fall down and die. Uh, so, and Bayman runs these guys and they're just like, where are we running to? So <laughs> Yeah, right. And you'll have seen that as Bam Bam, as, as Daniel's dog, sort of herds them, they stop, make sure that they're not being chased after, you know, they stop in their tracks and then they come right along and decide that, okay, this must be the new direction that we're going. Yeah. Now these have been dehorned. Yes. Uh, they were like that when you got them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of positives to dehorning. Um, if we were to continue to breed them out, would you still dehorn or would you let them grow? I would continue to dehorn because uh, these are expensive babies and you don't want them playing around and hurting each other accidentally. Right. You know, and especially when the uh, male comes in there, you know, you don't want him, them butting each other and, and all that kind of stuff. So. so it's really just for a management issue. And, and that's, you know, there's a lot to be said about dehorning. And the, the main thing is that they, their horns are there like, like a steel toe boot on a shoe. Yeah. And that's what they're for, is to meant to be abused and hit after. So you're dehorning, and what they're doing is burning them before the horns start and kind of stopping the, t the nail from growing is what's going on. Yeah, and it, it sounds like they're, they're dying and they're, but then they're, they just jump and start playing right immediately after. So yeah, right. it didn't hurt them. I think it's just holding them in one place is what the, they didn't like. So, Can you tell me about your long-term goals with goats? What's your... Like you said, you're only on an acre, but you have access to other land nearby. So what are you gonna do about uh, you know, a goal for how many you'll have? Well, uh, a goal, to, uh, probably I'm, I'm probably gonna end up with like six. And uh, six of them probably maximum, uh, you know, just for milk and for breeding purposes to, uh, you know, to help maintain their food and, and you know, to keep the food coming in and, and they're walking home by mm -hmm. themselves. <laughs> like, what are y'all doing guys? Uh -huh, Come yep. on, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> so about six about six okay yeah. and are you going to keep a buck on the property no no okay. i'd rather i mean it's a small acre and uh you would smell him the whole acre through yes he would <laughs> and then especially when he's trying to get these girls into heat he, he would really be stinking so yeah uh, you know and i didn't really get into the milk aspect of it uh, uh goat's milk is is low in fat i mean which is is not that bad for you but uh it, it'll you it take a lot of it to make uh, butter and cream and stuff like that. But I think it'd be worth it to be, be able to produce uh, your own milk on the homestead, especially when all I got to do is just take them out walking. And you know, in, in spring and summer, this is this lush green veg vegetation out here. You know, uh, you know they they don't really like to be too far away from the homestead. They've already acclimated that as as their home. So. <laughs> They keep wanting to slowly move back there. They're trying to herd us actually back there to <laughs> to the homestead. Girls, come on. <whistles> Lola, Tula, come here. Come so on. as you shepherd your goats, you really, you still have to keep an eye on bam, them. Bam, bam. Because they do in one way have a mind of their own, right? Yeah, they do have a mind of their own. Bam, bam, come here. Come, bam, bam. <whistles> come on. Come on, bring them back. There they come. Yeah, they, it, it's like uh, uh, in biblical times, they, they, uh, they always had shepherds out watching their, their animals. When they're free range like this, they, they have minds of their own. They'll wander to some place that they don't realize that they're in danger. So uh, we keep an eye on them and I have, I have leashes for them just in case they get really irritable, but you know, 
Uh, normally I don't have to use them, so they just come with there. But they're they're a little in, a little nervous about being up here right now, and and uh, I guess because it's windy. Um, there you go, baby. What's up, me? There you go. Nope. Okay. We want to check this place out. <laughs> you want something, Tula? Tula is a blue-eyed goat, and uh, as far as goats go, you know everybody knows that's pretty rare. So, uh, and they're both thoroughbred, and they both register and have papers. So, uh, so w would you say that somebody, even if they only had a half acre or a quarter acre, could keep goats? Yes, just keep them in pairs because they are a herd animal, and you keep one and you're gonna become the herd and you're gonna to have to be out there 24 seven or they're gonna be hollering for you 24 seven. So it's just better to have two and <laughs> they'll just follow each other around, you know, which I think is pretty cool, you know. But, uh, and them are actually sisters. And uh, uh, one day I'll show you the, the, the father of them. He is gorgeous. He has the cross back. Uh, uh, so he's this gorgeous male buck, but he uh, there's also another male there that I'm going to breed them with, and uh, of course they'll be, uh, you know, make beautiful babies. And, and new Nigerians always have twins, so if it's not twins, it's triplets. So uh, you're always if you get them registered, uh, nothing wrong with a $50 goat or a $100 goat, but if you get them registered, then you could sell them as registered goats. And then you can make their feed for the whole year. Come here, girls. Well, you know, as Daniel and I walked back down here with the goats, uh, you really, we got to talking about how much of an asset they are uh, to a homestead and just to a lifestyle that kind of goes back away from, uh, you know, the way things have gone. Mm -hmm. uh, where you're actually in touch with the animals that will become the milk that you put on the table, the butter and cheese, and at the end of the day, the, the meat that you eat. Yeah, it's the connection with your food. Uh, you know, it's it's being connected to your food on a homestead. You're connected with your animals. You're connected with your chickens. You're checking on them. You're working with them. You're walking them. You know, uh, right, like today, all the chickens are free ranging. The ducks are free ranging. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I'm just kind of keeping an ear out for all of them. You know, making sure that everybody's okay and happy. Yeah, and and they let you know, and that's a pretty good thing too. Is goats, uh, lamb, chickens dogs they're all indicators on your farm mm -hmm. they're gonna let you know when something shouldn't be there uh, just because they get spooked you know they get used to seeing Daniel and Krista and Anna and me and everyone walking around that's that's supposed to be here as soon as someone's not supposed to be here even as far down as a critter like a possum they let mm -hmm. you know yeah they'll start squawking and the goats will start hollering you know so but Bam Bam usually comes and takes care of that if it's if it's a critter so. it really is an amazing thing Bam Bam you know we have a German Shepherd Bam Bam and our German Shepherd get along great, but Bam Bam keeps our Shepherd in line as far as, it, you know, if, if Bree goes over to smell the goats, Bam Bam rushes right over and lets her know we're only going to look at them. <laughs> and does the same thing with the chickens. We're only looking, we're not eating. And he comes in quick and not mean or anything. Yeah. Just comes in and says, those are our, those are our friends. Yeah, those are our friends. Gets between <laughs> them and says, you know, look, <laughs> see, they're okay, you know. That's so. right. Uh, Bam Bam does that for Anna too, and uh, if he's new, somebody new comes up, he, he gets between them, and he kind of inches her back mm -hmm. as you know to get him back from that person. So that's right. Yeah. So I, I think that ghosts are probably something that everybody should consider mm -hmm. on their homestead. Do you think same way? Oh yeah, absolutely. In pairs, not a single one. In pairs. So because <laughs> Daniel was talking to me while we were following the ghosts that he had just one goat one time, and he would never do a single goat again. No, she was. She wanted to be heard, and and we were the only herd, so she had to be with us 24/7. We open up the door, she'd be standing on the porch. She'd run right in and pooping the whole time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do 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 now. Yep, right. <laughs> yes. But, 
she was a good goat, but. Yeah, and, and that's another thing too that, that's worth mentioning, that if you're in a climate where it's going to get cold or wet and muddy, you do have to consider that you might have to bring the babies in sometimes. Mm -hmm. So having, having that idea already in mind, you can set out an area and like you had brought the chicken in uh, on the last cold snap that you had. Yeah. It's just something you have to do and it might be a little uncomfortable, but you know, those, those are assets on your farm. Yes, absolutely. And she was a Rhode Island Red. We ended up losing her, uh, unfortunately, but... Uh, but you did all you could. Did we, we did all we could and, and tried to get her some electrolytes in her and, and get her back, but she, she just was too weak at that point. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's, we were happy to do it. Uh, you know, there was a chicken laying by the wood stove, but she would snuggle up to the wood stove when we thought she was going to make it, but yeah. she didn't make it. That so. just happens, yeah. yeah. So being prepared for those types of things is a good consideration for the homestead, I think. Oh, I agree 100%, you know, so it's being in touch with your food. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah. Well, perfect. I didn't, uh, I didn't have anything else. I want to make sure and let everyone know because YouTube is having these problems. If you haven't hit that little bell next to the subscribe button, make sure you don't unsubscribe, but hit that little bell so you get a video every time, or you get an alert every time one of Daniel's videos comes up. Yeah, exactly, because uh, they're, they're unsubscribing people from me, and everybody's coming saying, how do I get unsubscribed from you? So, you know, if you hit that bell, YouTube will know you want to be subscribed. So That's yeah. right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Yeah, I appreciate it, and y'all have a good one. Ani Obe Ocha means I love you in Hebrew. Later, guys.